Welcome to this tutorial. My name is Ian and I'm going to be taking you through the tutorial. So, so far in our series of tutorials, we've looked at how we could use exploratory and descriptive data analytics to understand our data. So basically we asked ChatGPT to look at the data and come back with what it found. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can summarize and aggregate the data that we've got. So often you might have questions such as, what is my total sales by my region? What was my total sales by my customers? So we're going to be looking at how we can get ChatGPT to do that. Please remember you do need a paid plan to be able to get ChatGPT to work with the data analysis. Please also make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel and keep up to date with all our latest content. But let's jump into the tutorial. I will see you there. Welcome to this tutorial. So we're going to continue with the series of tutorials that we've had so far, looking at how we can get ChatGPT to do some great data analysis for us. So in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can summarize and aggregate our data into nice looking tables. If you've followed the other tutorials, you'll know that I've been using a sales table. If you haven't followed the other tutorials, I'm quickly just going to bring this up using Excel just to show you what the table of data looks like. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, we've got a table of data. Now, this is something that you probably work with quite a bit. And in this case, what we've got is an order ID. We've got a date. We've got some quantity, sales, profit, customer name. We've got a state, region, product category, subcategory, and our product name. So we've got quite a bit of fields that we can work with. Also, there's about 8,400 rows of data here. So quite a substantial amount of data. So the purpose of this tutorial is to say, how can we easily create some summary reports showing what's going on in this large amount of data that we've got? Okay, let's jump back to ChatGPT and see how we're going to do this. Right, so we're back in ChatGPT now. And the first thing I did was I got that file and I just used this option over here to be able to select the file. And the first part we're gonna do is we're gonna load this file into ChatGPT. Now, if you've seen the other tutorials, you'll have seen how I've done this before. So basically, I just tell it to load the file, and then I tell it to list the fields. And really, the reason for that is that it's going to load the file, and then it's got to look at the table to be able to list the fields. And I just want to make sure that it's able to actually access the table of data with no problems, and it just shows me a result from that. Now, what you're going to find is when you start using ChatGPT, you might just tell it to load the file, and then you've got your own commands that you might be using, and you know that would work for you. So that's basically just to give me an understanding of the different fields that are in this table at the moment. Now, if we look at this list of fields, we maybe want to do some summary tables. Maybe, for example, I might be interested to know what is my sales by my region. So I've got my regions over here. I've got my sales values. So what I could tell it to do is let's just tell it to say, we want to display the sales by region. Okay. so. Simple instruction over there, just display the sales by or different region. And as you can see, I've actually misspelled by, but I think it will figure it out. You'll tend to find that ChatGPT is pretty good at understanding what you intend to actually say. So there we go, we've got the total sales by region being read out there. And as you can see, it's got each of the regions, there are four regions in the data, and it's got the total sales that is next to it. But what I might want to do with this now is I might want to get it more in a table format. It looks good at the moment, just bullet points, but maybe I want to show it in a different format. So what I could say is actually, let's tell it to display these results in a table format. So just say display the results in a table. And let's see how it does with that. And there we go. It's already busy with that. It's building a table and it's now creating a nicely looking formatted table for me. Again, if you've seen some of the other tutorials, we might want to do a bit of work on the formatting of this. For example, I've got decimals over here. Also, maybe I might want a total. So when we're doing our summarizer in, and our aggregation of tables, you might want to say add a total, for example, and we could also tell it to format and say with our thousands separator, and also we don't want any decimals to be in this. So we want these decimals to be removed. So let's give that as an instruction. Okay, so it starts to now create the table. And as you can see straight away, there's no decimals there, but it's got the thousand separators. And hopefully just now it's gonna show me the total. And there we go, that's giving me exactly what I was hoping for. And that's really the first part that we can do with this is that once we want to start summarizing and aggregating the tables, we can just give it that set of commands. 
Now let's say we want to create something a little bit more sophisticated. We want a bigger table. Let's say we want to look at our sales by our product subcategories. There's a few more product subcategories. Maybe we want to include a sort with this as well. So let's tell it that we actually want to create a table displaying the sales by product subcategory. Now, I'm not going to tell it to add the total, and I'm not going to tell it to format with a thousand separator and no decimals. What tends to happen is it actually remembers those formattings, and we should see that those will actually come through into this table without me having to tell it to do it. Now, it doesn't always do it, but most of the time it tends to do it. So we're going to keep it that we're not going to tell it to do that again. We're going to assume that it's going to keep that. So we're going to tell it to do that. But what we do want is we want to sort. So we're going to tell it to sort sales. And let's tell it to sort. We're going to say call it total sales by from highest to lowest. So we'll just add that in there. So we're going to create a table displaying the sales by product subcategory. Total, total, the total sales will be used as the sort, and that's going to be from the highest to the lowest. Okay, so it's telling me that it's going to actually sort it, and I can see straight away it's actually got the product subcategory with the highest sales on top, and as you can see, it's, as it's going down, it has actually sorted it from highest to lowest. And the other part you may notice is that formatting is using the thousand separator and no decimals. So it has carried that forward into this table. It's really good that you don't have to tell it to do that again. Fortunately, this time, it didn't do the total. So we would have to add a new instruction onto this one to tell it to add the total. I'm not going to do that, but I'll leave that for you to play with. I wanted to show you the next part, though. When we're creating tables, now, this has got quite a few values, but it's not got hundreds of values. So we're going to create a table, which is the sales by customer name. Now there's 795 customers in the table. So you're gonna see it's not gonna show us all of our customers. And you can imagine if it actually did show us all the customers, how long it would take to actually show that table. Let's just do that. Let's just create a table. I'm gonna tell it to display the total sales by customer name. So we're going to just accept that. And as I said, there's quite a few customers here. So we'll see what it's going to do in terms of showing the table. Okay, so it's starting to build the table for us. As you can see, it's got some of the customers. And what it does is it just does that dot, dot, dot. And then it jumps and you can see we've moved from A to B in this case. And then it just shows a few of the other customers on the other side. And that's basically the way it displays it. However, what it has done is it has actually created this table. So if you wanted to, you could actually tell it to list the entire table. Now, as I said, I'm not going to do that because that's going to take quite a long time to render and to show on the screen, but you could do that. But the other part that I can show you is that if we were to export this table, just to show that we do have the entire table. So we're going to tell it to export the table. We'll open it up in Excel just to show that we do have the entire table. Okay, great. So it's telling me it's going to export this. It's now created a downloadable file. I'm going to download this file and we'll open up in Excel and let's have a look at that in a few seconds. Okay, so there we go. We're now in Excel. I've opened that file and as you can see, they do have the list of all the customers. And if I just use Control and Down on Windows, you can see we go to row 796, which the 795 customers plus the one row for the header. So that is correct. Okay, so just to quickly show you, it has actually created all of the results correctly for that. Okay, we're going to close Excel. Let's go back to ChatGPT. Now, one of the other things you can do, though, is you could be working with this bigger table. Let's say, for example, I did get this result for the customer name table, but now I was intrigued to know how many customers are there? And you can actually just ask that. How many customers? We would just say, how many customers are there? This is a question. And there we go, it tells me 795 unique customers. If you wanted to, you could actually say how many customers have sales over say $60,000. So we'll just say how many customers have sales over 60,000. And again, it should just give us the answer of the total number of customers with sales. 
So as I say, once you've got it to do those calculations, you can easily just ask many further questions if you wanted to. And there we go. It reckons that we have 23 customers who have exceeded it. Now, the last part that I do want to just show you in terms of summarizing and aggregating your information. is so often if you're working with pivot tables, you may have something in your rows and something in your columns, and then you have your values. So let's say we wanted to create a table that displays the total sales by our region and by our product category. Let's see how we're going to do that. So we're just going to say create a table displaying sales by region. Let's spell that correctly. Region and product category. We're just going to then tell it to place product category in the columns. Just like you would with your Excel pivot tables or so, you would build it up, you'd have your region in the row, have your product category in the columns, and your sales value is being calculated. Here we go, as you can see, we've got our region, we've got our product category going across, and there we get our calculations being done. Okay, so hopefully this has just given you some ideas of how you can easily create some summary and aggregated tables. As I said, this is part of a series, so many other tutorials that we're going to cover lots of different topics in. I hope to see you in some of the other tutorials.